What's up? Got a Tucson. Um, we're going to check it in so we can check it out. Let's get it out of this box, take it apart, clean it up, and uh, see what's going on here. Okay. Yeah, I know which one this one is. It is a Tucson TS Come on This one's been wrapped for a while. This is an old model and I don't think I don't think it's back in production. I just think that they dig them out once in a while. But what do I know? I mean, man, they could have made this a month ago for all I know. But it's, this is a TS-351. It's a titanium with 14C28 steel, 28N. And this is, I mean, for a Tucson collector, this is a must-have. This is one that, let me wipe this oil off. And then... Man, is that, it was oily. This is one that when it was out, um, I put my eyeballs on it and hesitated to take a run at it because I thought I could get it cheaper. And then it stopped being available. And so recently, I saw where it was available. And so I was like, man, I got I to gotta take a run at that because I really want one of these in my collection. It's so unique that you got to come after it. Just all that wonderful milling in there. So nice. Even the backspacer has that wave pattern in it. Or the pocket clip, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, let's let it run. It's got nice jimping, grab my finger. Oh, so nice. Not quite drop shut, but pretty, pretty smooth. I mean, this has a potential to, even though it's so unique, like, this thing's got a chance to get in the pocket. I'm not sure whose logo that is. Design logo. TS351, 14C28N. And then, I'm not sure who that is. Wow. Nice little upswept blade. Pretty cool. Small pivot. No collars. It's actually not a small pivot. I think the pivot size is the same. It's just the collars are smaller. Let's go ahead and get it apart. Woo! Going to need a screw buster for that one. That was not complying. Even now it's not. I mean, there's a mountain of Loctite in there. That's the only thing I can think. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, look at it all. Yeah, that got gooped up, man. Okay. Well, let's keep her moving. I'm going to take... I'm going to take the pressure off that detent. Yeah. I mean, that is a lot of Loctite. I find it hard to believe that that come from the factory, but the knife was purchased new from uh, D-Win on eBay. So, I don't have any reason to believe 
that it's not new from the factory. What am I missing? It does not. Yeah, it's coming apart. It's just all that Loctite. Yeah. Oof. I mean, it's oily. It's not dirty. If I can get that out of there. There it is. And definitely pull that pivot pin. It's a captured pin that's coming in from the non-captured side and then setting in the captured side. Yeah. Okay. One more little racetrack washer. There it is. All right, we're disassembled. Get to cleaning. I mean, it's not filthy, but it's a little wet. So, I don't see anything necessarily unique in here. Super light skeletonized scales, both of these. I mean, this this one's got the pocket clip on it, and the lock bar and the in, the metal inserts, so it's heavier. But this thing, I mean, when I drop it, you'll probably hear it. Yeah, it's super light. This one too. It's not heavy, but it's heavier. Um, yeah, look, lots of skeleton. Skeletonizing, skeletizing, I don't know. You know, I think, hey, they've removed a lot of material here to lighten the weight of it. <laughs> yeah, I may have to look that, look that word up. I think I'm struggling there. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of whatever that is uh, for weight reduction, for sure. They also, I'm seeing here on the backspacer, that they created a, uh, I don't know, for a lanyard, kind of an interesting little lanyard hole, the way that they've done that. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's just through there, cool. Not sure what all the uh, Loctite was about, but I mean, sometimes people just get a little overzealous, I guess. You know, who knows? Whoever was in charge of the Loctite at the factory, maybe this one just got a little extra gooped. Might not have been any real purpose for it. It just happened. It's a nice blade. Okay. We're ready to go back together. Pretty quick. Try to get this pin lined up so that when that scale comes down, it lines up. I'm pretty sure it's right about there. Um, get these in. Okay. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of those that just from the uniqueness of it, I know I really wanted one in my collection, but when last they were for sale, um, I couldn't get it done, and then they kind of just disappeared for a minute. So I've learned to just be patient and uh, 
because they easily can come back around. You know, they're gone six months, eight months, whatever. And then all of a sudden, there's one. Um, sometimes the secondary markets will will show up with them. Sometimes somebody uh, will list one uh, on eBay that's used uh, like new. But typically what I'm finding there is that people are really trying to get paid. Um, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, you buy a knife and when you sell it, you want to make money on it. Um, you know, whatever, man. You get, you know, people got to eat, right? So, um, but... For a knife that sells for, you know, let's say it sold for $70 and then you want $225 for it. I mean, I, you really have limited your buying crowd because, man, only somebody that just wants it more than they can, you know, or they've just got more money than they need that they're just willing to throw whatever amount of money at stuff. Um, ooh. The blade come around, try to bite me. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I, I see those listings. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is you won't see it with other manufacturers of knives for the most part like like you know you won't see a a spider co or um a zero tolerance or a Wii. you know Wii's pretty hot right now they've got some pretty hot models and um they definitely have a couple that i would like to add to my collection um, but you don't see like the manufacturer's price of it. I guess maybe that's where the difference is, is because the manufacturer's price, um, is really kind of set by eBay. It's not set by the manufacturer. The manufacturer's not saying, Hey, we'll sell this knife for a hundred dollars and then somebody's trying to sell it for two hundred dollars what's happening is the manufacturer says hey i'm going to sell it on ebay in an auction how much will you give me for it and then I mean, there's no play in there, none whatsoever, and that action is like a million times different. The detent is almost kind of, I'm, I'm almost going to say that it's weak, a weak detent, but uh, it's... It's snappy. I know one thing I'm gonna do on this one. I didn't I didn't do it, but I'm gonna put a just a tiniest little amount of oil on that detent right there. It's not dragging, but I'm shocked by the the difference in the uh, the action. Very smooth. I mean, it's running wonderfully. So I'm going to check it one more time for play. And there is none. I mean, it's, it's rock solid. So I'm going to call that good. There's no reason for me to mess around. I guess I have to check because it had all that Loctite in it. Yeah. 
I'm gonna call it good. Okay. So let's get back to the action. So TS three fifty one fourteen C twenty eight N. I mean, there's only one way in this knife, and that's through that back flipper. You can do it with your thumb or your finger. And it it's not drop shut, but man, it's close. Just a little a little flick of the wrist and that thing's sending its you know, it's on its way down. And a couple little shakes. And it's good to go. So the action is is really good on it. Um the lock access, it's scalloped uh, both sides here so that you can dig in there and get after it. But it's not hard to get in there at all. Um, I'm going to call that 40% on the lockup. Um, nice solid lockup. You know, the detent sort of feels on the weak side, but not really. I mean, if... Just even the slightest touch, that thing will sling out there all the way. So there's no reason to have it any tighter. Um, the grip on this knife, so very strong grip here. Um, I can feel the, the pocket clip in my palm, and there is a hot spot here on this corner. Just that corner, it's rounded, but... Just the way that that lays, it's it's digging. So it's kind of hot there. I can feel the pocket clip. But there's nothing outrageous going on there. It's not like, oh, I can't grip that. And then this finger guard makes this just a complete um, confident grip. Like this grip could go forward, slice, whatever. There's a slight, you can... You could go here and choke up to, you know, detail work, whatever you're doing there. Um, but very nice, strong grip, very confident. There's, there's, I, very confident that this knife would not slip and my fingers find the blade. So, um, the pocket clip, um, Let's just, let's just look. I've kind of made a commitment that these pocket clips are such a big deal because you can have a, an amazing knife that you just really like, man. You can't wait to put it to work and get it in your pocket and carry it and, you know, the whole thing. And, and then the pocket clip is trash. So uh, this seemed like the only logical thing to me. I'm just going to put it in a pocket. So... The space, I can already tell, the space between the clip, the back of the clip and the scale is pretty narrow. So on these thick pants, it's, you know, it's bunching up in there. And these are, uh, you know, basically jean shorts um, that are thick. And you can see that this is marking up these pants pretty, pretty good coming out of the pocket as well. Yeah, I mean, and so here's what's happening is because they didn't mill this on the inside of that scale, they could have just as easily flipped that on the inside as the outside, but because they did it on the outside, coming in and out of the pocket, these two lips, you can see the threads from the from the shorts right here. Just grabbing, grabbing this way and this way in the pocket. So, yeah, I mean, on thick pants, not so great. I mean, if you went in and out of your pocket several times a day, it's going to chew them up for sure. 100% it's going to chew that up. So on a thick, on a thinner pocket, like this material up here, it doesn't have this big triple stitch, you know, seam. Uh, just thinner. Uh, it's still pretty grippy. And it's it's this. It's just shredding that material. It's not the clip itself. 
Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's functional, but man, it's not a great pocket clip, that's for sure. Um, can I come in here and smooth some of these edges? Yeah, I mean, you know, the problem with doing that is um, it's not going to look the same. So if I come in here and start, you know, grinding and sanding and rounding, it's going to look repaired. It's not going to look standard. So, I, you know, it's not something that I would put in my pocket every day just because it's going to terrorize my pants. You know, I mean, it's going to chew them to chew them up. Yeah. All right. So, uh, safety. The blade is completely protected with this full backspacer, so no contact there. The tip, let's see. I mean, man, it's out there. It's waiting to be grabbed. And if I try real hard from the top right here, I can catch it. I can definitely catch my finger on that. So the question is, is how realistic is that? If that was in my pocket, how realistic would it be to reach down in there and catch that right there and there's a chance i'm not saying it's a big chance but i can so if i if you know like i'm reaching down i can touch that now the truth is i would probably be reaching this way so if for whatever reason i went like this right here into that pocket I mean I'm really having to manipulate it so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a pass so this passes this passes with uh, just be aware of it um, the pocket clip I mean uh, you know maybe if I mess with the tension and play with it I can get that to work but as the knife's received going in and out of the pocket, I'm going to say that that's a fail. Just because it'll shred, it'll shred my pants, 100%. Uh, the upside for me, I didn't really buy this knife looking at this profile and saying to myself, man, I can't wait to carry that knife. This really was a purchase for the uniqueness of it to get it in my Tucson collection. And so from that perspective, it was a must-have for me. Um functionality wise let's check the last thing here and see if it's sharp and yeah yeah that thing that thing come out of the factory ready to cut for sure um would a strop make it a little better yeah probably i mean i can hear it i can feel it but plenty sharp plenty plenty sharp all right so pricing and availability wrap up this video um i paid 75 dollars for this it's a titanium frame 14c 28n um titanium mill pocket clip 75 dollars is that a good price I, hey i think 14c 28n for you know 70 to 90 dollars is is reasonable i mean 70 to 100 dollars so, yeah, the price, I'm good with that. Um, the um, um, availability of this knife, White Mountain Knives uh, currently has this knife in stock. I don't know how many they have, but they have it, and it's priced without a discount code around, I think, $85. So if you take the discount code... You know, you take the eight dollars and fifty cents off of it, the ten percent. You know, you're down around seventy, seventy-eight dollars, seventy-seven dollars and some change. So that seems about right to me. But it is available for you know. So let's say seventy-five dollars, and they ship for free. You probably have it in four days, four or five days max. So the Tucson TS three fifty one. Um, titanium 14C28N. Uh, appreciate you watching.